I'm going to be reading an excerpt from my novel, Yams Do Not Exist. Um, this part is called Appassionata on Argyle. When the 60% chance of a thunderstorm was confirmed, Farinata was startled out of his reverie, once again failing to notice the yellow corn rows or the bosom heaving through a t-shirt or the thighs swathing his crumpled sad sack of a self in the passing aura of their continual locomotion. She might have made the tackle, but he was already off the little bridge in Les Sherman Park and hurrying away under the downpour, and besides, it was Lucia, the young woman from the library, who made the catch. At this instant, a stolid Brontean defense is in order, if not for Thackeray, then for our friend, lest he find himself entirely friendless and soaked through. Not to stop the action, but there's a footnote that's kind of important here. Uh, the stolid Brontean defense refers to a quote um, from Charlotte Bronte. They say he's like Fielding. They talk of his wit, humor, and comic powers. He resembles Fielding as, does, as an eagle does a vulture. Fielding could stoop on carrion, but Thackeray never does. Jane Eyre, this ain't. We are thus carried away by more hyperbole than our own carrion stupor deserves, perhaps on account of the excitement brought on by the thunderstorm. Metaphysical awareness, unless there are more substantial grounds beyond what passes for omniscience here, enable the pretty eye of Lucia to discern such a degree of quality in the clammy, sopping thing sprinting along Argyle. Personally, she had never presumed to approach the art or elegance of a defensive block, but in her view it was now or never. Instinctively, as goes the modifier in most erotic yarns, she found the muddled blob in the corner of her eye and knew it must be helped or hindered at once. Her timing was impeccable. The embrace was neither too flimsy nor too firm, and Farinata was bowled over into an open bit of road. He was up to his waist and whatnot and about to let fly interrogatives in the most pejorative sense possible when the radiant face, in some way attached to the comely hand offering help, brought about a flash of recognition. A proper lady might have waited for hailstones the size of your head, but after all, it was a new century. Mild tackling and invitations during a downpour were to be expected. He hung his head meekly and followed her inside, unaware that the lady of the yellow corn rose would have made him feel like a warrior without the usual head games. He surrendered up his things for prompt laundering, and as collateral, she gave him a floral dressing gown. By the time the green tea had adequately steeped, his sorry tale was ready to pour. Farinata had been presumptuous. He had flown too near the sun. His little book had arrived and he had dared to ask for reading at the chain store. Readers, that's readers with a Z. And he's thinking of his lady in waiting, his lady of his, uh, lady of the reasonable distance. We omit any wit of anticipation he felt over Trish running across his homemade poster any number of ways, as it adds nothing to the story. Saturday arrived and there was some tiny misunderstanding. He had hoped for a microphone, an inch of elevation, and even a few chairs. Instead, two women in readers' vests had tucked him behind a display featuring a memoir by a reality show celebrity who ate nothing but a hot new superfood. They had brought him a complimentary espresso from the in-store rival of Grounds for Delight, sealing his fate in terms of brand betrayal, Trish, and then had used the in-store talking stick to get him going. He had begun to read, slowly and softly at first, and then with more energy and volume, although he was suddenly reminded of the gang of Jehovah's Witnesses in the public square, who had certainly won this round. Mothers had marched their brood along, in some cases scooping them up, as we see in westerns right before the shooting begins. Other patrons of the store had hidden, hidden among rows of mugs, potpourri holders, scented candles, and picture frames. Then the heckling had begun. Mostly disparate characters, young enough in years, carefully hissing their critiques from behind various accessories. In this economy, it was hard to put together a decent clack and Farinata had been obliged to take every remark to heart. It was not lost in him that Trish had not swept in at the last minute to purchase a signed copy. His existence was dubious at best.